The flowchart is as follows. Herein, there are five departments, namely sales order department, credit department, warehouse, shipping and billing department. Then, look at the processes involved. There are the preparation of sales order, performing of credit check, release of goods to shipping, reconcile and prepare bill of lading, match the documents and prepare sales invoice. There are numerous documents involved, source documents involved, and these source documents inflows and outflows that actually triggers these processes. And look at the filing of these documents. Please take note that the flowchart depicts the traditional way of the business processes pertaining to revenue transaction. It is definitely going to be different in an IT environment. Okay now, we need to test the controls. Here are some of the ways to test the control. These are very general ways to test the control. There are inquiry of clients personnel, inspection of documents and records, observation of the operation of the control, walkthroughs, reperformance of the control activities. Subsequently, we need to evaluate the strength of the controls before we decide on whether or not to either follow reliance strategy or no reliance strategy. Now, listen carefully. Reliance strategy literally means that the client's internal control are good and therefore auditor could rely on and therefore reduce the substantive procedures. However, when the outcome of tests of controls provided evidence that the internal control is poor, therefore no reliance strategy will be used. This means more substantive procedures will be carried out. Nonetheless, there are certain accounts, namely long-term debt, of which the transaction is not frequent and may refer to only a few loans made, hence a no reliance strategy is used. That means basically they are, we are going to use substantive procedures. Here is an example of controls and tests of controls. Remember, it is management responsibility to actually implement the controls. Here, the control objective is to record transactions simply means recorded transactions are authorized and actually occurred. The examples of controls is sales recorded only with a valid customer order and shipping document. That's the first one. The second one is credit is approved before shipment. Okay. Now, the auditor's responsibility is to test these controls. So the first one, samples recorded sales transactions and vouch back to source documents. The second one would be examine each customer's balance and compare with their credit limit. Now, what would be the implication if this control is not working? For the first one, recorded sales may have not occurred at all. The second one is that the receivables may not be collectible. Hence, the substantive procedures needs to be extended. The accounts receivable confirmation needs to be carried out and there is a need to review the subsequent collections. Management assertions, yeah, let's remind ourselves, in terms of recorded sales or revenue accounts, the management assertions is occurrence. Okay? Now, these are the substantive procedures. Perform substantive analytical procedures. Trace sales invoice to customer orders and bills of lading. Confirm balances or unpaid invoices with customers, examine subsequent collections as evidence that the sales existed, scan sales journal for duplicate entries. Now, in terms of the accounts receivable, the management assertion is valuation allocation. So the substantive procedures among others are as follows. First, verify clerical accuracy of sales invoices and agreements on sales invoices with supporting documents. Second, trace sales invoices to sales journal and customer's ledger. The third, confirm balances or unpaid invoices with customers. Fourth, food sales journal and accounts receivable trial balance and reconcile accounts receivable trial balance with control accounts. Fifth, review adequacy of the allowance for doubtful accounts. And the sixth one would be perform sales cutoff test. Now, there are also substantive procedures which are very specific for accounts receivable. This is covered under ISA 505. 
that is external confirmation. We will cover this in the class. Now, coming back to questions that I posed earlier to you, what has it got to do with auditor, an external auditor? What is the risk to the auditor? In the case of the accounts receivable, remember, management assertions on, on the accounts receivable, one of it is valuation. There may be possible misstatement of overstating the accounts receivable, and if it is material, then the accounts is in itself does not reflect true and fair view. Hence, the risk to the auditors is that they may have not been able to detect these material misstatements and therefore render an inappropriate audit opinion. That is all about this lecture. See you in class. Thank you.